This is the All Things Nerd Podcast, Season 3, Episode 28. Tonight, it's all about San Diego Comic-Con. We are doing our prep episode because Comic-Con, the 50th anniversary, is coming to you next week. And we're going to talk about the major panels in the big rooms, Ballroom 20 and Hall H, what our excitement levels are, and if it's worthwhile to even spend your time trying to get in there, along with some theories of what we might think come, come along with that. So if you're listening to this cast on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or here on Twitch, make sure that you drop a comment, subscribe, and uh, come back for more. And with that, here's the intro. Hello to all the geek enthusiasts and nerd aficionados. It is Mess5150 here with another All Things Nerd podcast for you guys to talk about San Diego Comic-Con. Thank you for joining us again. We have been here every Friday, and we are very appreciative that you keep coming back, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> I have three people with, well, three total tonight, counting me, because we are the three that are going to Comic-Con this year. We have a, another member that's going to Comic-Con, but uh, was not able to make it on this cast. So, you just got the three of us. You got me, Mess5150, who's been going to Comic-Con for at least ten years, I believe. Along with me on the cast, we also have Nudie Rudy joining us. How are you, sir? And let us know how how, how often you've gone to Comic-Con. <laughs> Pretty darn decent, and uh, I'm a Comic-Con virgin. My first year this year. so well, You haven't been able to say that in a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> with me, please. For anything. <laughs> uh, um, and then we have... Uh, uh, are super hoovy and freaks on the cast with us as well. What about you, Super? How are you? And how many times have you been to Comic Con? Uh, I'm I'm a little tired, but overall good. And I guess technically this is my third year going, but my second year going into the panel rooms. Third year. Oh, so you? Well, because I went. Big, I did some you? offsites. I did offsites a couple ah, years ago. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. that's true. That's true. Which you'll be doing some offsites offsites this week. Uh, this uh, exactly. this year as well. So I'll be the offsite bringer of videos that didn't make sense <laughs> forget i said that <laughs> okay um so usually what we do to start out the show is what's called our geek out which is talking about things that we've been doing um that you should be checking out and you let us know in the chat room what things you've been up to what you've been doing um however hey pete i see you in the chat room thanks for joining <laughs> um let us know what uh, what you, you've been doing. But uh, what we're going to talk about for our Geek Out this week is what are prep, because I want to see the differences in prep for Comic-Con uh, between somebody that's been here going to it for a long time versus somebody that uh, that's just going for the first time to see how prepared they get. So, um, yeah, so this is Get Your Geek On. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nudie Rudy. We're gonna start with you because this is your first Comic Con. What are you doing to get prepared for Comic Con? What have you got? What have you done so far? Um, lots of calisthenics, uh, getting in good shape. Make sure I got the uh, the right uh, stamina for all this. You know, I'm drinking my protein shakes, uh, Rocky style training montage, playing Eye of the Tiger in the background the whole time. <laughs> I did buy some very nice camp chairs. Okay, so I'll be waiting in line. Are they? Um... Are they sleeper chairs or small small chairs or what? I uh, got one really nice recliner, full on uh, like luxury chair, and then we got one that's actually an ultra light, really easy to carry around. So we can kind of try them both out, see which ones we dig, and yeah, guess we'll figure it out. So this is this is why I love I love uh, talking to first time Comic Con people. Um, I, I'm so happy that you're prepared and ready to camp out. And you got your chairs and you're ready and all that stuff. What you'll learn as you go to Comic-Con is those nice chairs get smaller and smaller and smaller. Because those chairs need to go somewhere. You got to lug them back to your hotel room <laughs> before uh -huh. a certain time. And what you'll notice when we're going into Hall H, you will see about 20 chairs just thrown in the bushes because people are like, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least I only spent like 60 bucks on the luxury one. It was a good deal. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> Ultra light, literally like under a pound. It's 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 nice. It, yeah. it folds up real tiny. So, 
that See, that's, that's, be... that's the good stuff. That's the that's yeah. I I actually have this nice big um uh, 49ers chair that I bring every year, but <laughs> about six thirty seven a.m. You got to be back in line. So usually about five a.m. Um, I'm getting on to if I'm not in downtown, which I'm not this year. I'm getting on the shuttle mm -hmm. to ride to drop off at the hotel to drop off my chair. To get back in the shuttle to ride back to the cons. So you just bring it in the hall with you and sit no, in your you can't. seat. You can't. Yeah. No, that's messed up. Because, they, uh, they last year they had a spot where you could pay five dollars and they'll hold it, you know, for the whole day, and then you came back and kind of like airport shuttle, you know. So for it. five bucks, it wasn't bad. Uh, nice. But I don't know. I mean, no guarantees it'll be there again this year. They. They said it was the first time they were trying it out, but I think they made some money off of it. So I'm sure. Um, Pete says he's getting his geek on by by. I'm assuming that's attempting. Atomoting. <laughs> Atomoting. Atomoting. But I think it's attempting to build a remote controlled Lego Wally, which is awesome. I need to nice. see a video hmm. of that. Put that on your on your Twitter, Pete, so we can see it once you put it together. Because that would be I, I want to see that. Um, so is that all you did to get prepared? You just got your you got your uh, your your chairs. I uh, got some uh, Camelbacks, so cool. just got some good water supplies. Me and I stocking up on sunscreen. That's so, a good one. Yeah, I got to... burned after being in in the line for like three hours last year because people couldn't get to me. So. <laughs> um, super. Fair, all the skin, man. You've <laughs> gone one yeah. year. Yeah. So what is your preparation level? What are you doing to get prepared for Comic-Con this year? Earplugs. <laughs> earplugs and she earplugs. Learned. Yes. <laughs> so earplugs. Um, I got a little, I'm, I was scouting out Walmart for a little like cot that raises off the ground like two inches and it folds up super small and it's light um, for sleeping in line. Um now you because... she's really learned on that one because last year it was the oh I think I can grab some pillows and just a blanket from the hotel and I should be good. yeah well when I did that it was okay it was the first night when I didn't know really the going to meet John Barrowman which I still am mad at that I didn't even need to get in that flipping line all night for um, I had your 49ers chair and then I had like my little jacket and my little red blanket that is maybe it's you know three feet by four feet. Um, and I thought your chair, I don't know why I thought your chair had little recliner in it, the way you were talking about it. Mm -hmm. I thought it reclined. So no, I was like, this so is fine. It's perfect. Kind of like, yeah. And I'm literally like trying to curl up like a turtle with my head and I've got my blanket <laughs> and it's cold in the jacket. And then I'm like, fuck, you know, screw it. I'm going to put it on the ground. And I tried that. And then I was like rolling up like a roly poly in the jacket and I'm trying to do this. And then I'm like, screw this. I'm just going to read. I'm like, who's up on Facebook? Ha ha. Sister Debbie, here we go. This, and she was just like, what are you doing up? And I'm like, it's comic con. Let's talk about John Barrowman. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. And she's like, Oh my God, it is four o'clock in the morning <laughs> in Houston. All right, let's go. And she kept me entertained for about four and a half hours. Um, yeah, and it's funny that uh, just thoughts of Comic-Con a year later caused Super to almost drop the F-bomb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the frustration that, that happens that. sometimes. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's fantastic. My wife in the other room heard me talking about what we're doing to get prepared and sent me a text. <laughs> and the text says, SDCC packing list, sunscreen, hat, sunglasses if you have them, hand sanitizer, airborne, because the con yep. flu. Um, yep. comfortable shoes you can walk for in a, wa a mm -hmm. while in light jacket, dry snacks, camping chair, big phone charger, power bank, book, backpack, student, uh, this is for, for her, her sister to know student ID, cash, pillow, phone card, phone, phone cord, pain <laughs> with, with exclamation points, pain reliever, sleeping bag, headphones, earbuds, refillable water bottle. If you prefer, that was just what she threw together. And like I said, yeah, 10 that... years of going. Pretty um, much, I'm gonna have all that, and uh. I have. Uh, I also. It's, uh, it's probably if he says I want to see a super nerd build a motorized lazy boy and drive around Comic Con in that. <laughs> Which would, uh, there's a lot of time. things that you see driving around Comic Con. There's usually uh, yeah. a couple of Batmobiles and stuff. So that could be some good cosplay. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Doing Al Bundy, you just have your hand in your crotch the whole time. You're a client. 
I like it. So once again, in terms of preparation <laughs> for Comic Con, I have photos and of um, different things that I found over the last three months of booths that I want to go to to try and get stuff. So I have a whole like this, 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 this. This is where I'm going for this. This is what's going on here. These are the times for this. Um, I also bring a <laughs> I bring a uh, power strip. Because mm-hmm. there's plugs outside at Hall H to to actually like share plugging in to charge things, and about yeah. fifteen, yeah, that's about right. About fifteen phone chargers, the little portable ones. So yep. once again, in terms of going ten years, you think of things that you just never would have <laughs> before. And snacks. Snacks and water are essential because you don't want to keep paying overpriced, you know. Well, you, you can also know where to go. There's a Ralph's in downtown. There's also a 7-Eleven in downtown. Um, one, we have a thing called our Comic-Con Nerd Family, which uh, Nudie Rudy's going to meet, meet this year. That it's people that I met in line about seven years ago and has just continuously grown. And we stay in contact with each other. Amazing people. But the first year that I, that I met these people... Um, one of them, he was there for the first time with his son and nicest guy in the world. And he's just like, uh, he's like, does anybody want water? I'm like, no, we're good. He's like, can you watch my son? Did, you know, and it was like, yeah, okay. And he like okay, took off, sure, took off went to Seven Eleven and bought like a 24 pack of water, but he like disappeared for like an hour. We're like, what just happened? What's he didn't even tell you where he was going. Like, no, he was going to be at water. Like... He said he was oh, going to okay. be water. So, <laughs> okay. Because that would, um, that would freak me out a little bit, like, if a stranger just was like, hey, can you know what, can you just watch my no, boy we, for we a minute? Been ta- I, we had been know. talking for a good <laughs> three or four hours, so, you know, <laughs> okay. you know, nerds, nerds, nerds unite, and nerds get great, yeah. and, and then he comes rolling back up with a 24-pack of water and just started passing out, and that's what you'll find in line, too, is yeah. that people will get, like, pizzas, they'll get donuts. And they'll just start passing them because they'll just be like, hey, you guys want a slice of pizza? And, and it'll go, it'll just continue down the line <laughs> until it's gone and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a weird camaraderie. It it that happened in the supernatural line last year. Like my sis, other sister Ruth was there volunteering um, for a booth, and she's just like, "Hey, what part of the line are you at?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I'm in the grass under a tent. Like pick a <laughs> row. I'm there. You know." And she was like, well, just like stand up on your chair or something. And I said, okay. And she brings like this huge fruit tray, like bags of pastries. And she's like, here, the the booth bought all these. And I'm like, you have two people that work at the booth. Like, what the hell are you buying all this food for? (laughs) And she just hands it out. And she's like, okay, bye. And just like walks away. And so I'm like, well, I can't eat all this food. So I start passing it out to the people with me. And I'm like, just, just go. I'm like, I can't literally, like, I don't want to take this all in there, you know, um, so everyone was very happy because they didn't have to get out of line to go buy breakfast burritos or anything oh, like yeah. that. So, yeah. And, uh, a bearded master joins us in the chat room. He says, that's why you get a nice portable phone charger from Amazon. It's fully charges about six times less items to carry. You would think I have two of those and they're solar chargers as well that they charge from the sun and they still run out because there's okay. Them. So there's a there's a, a group at Comic Con called Con Rangers and they make um, badges like like uh, like Boy Scout Girl Scout badges, and one of them is carried a full charge on your phone for one day. That's that's an achievement. So and that's <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. But that's it. That's 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 what we want to talk about is what we're doing to geek out and get ready for. For it. I've actually submitted um, things to different offsites as well to pre-register to see if it'll cut down line line spaces to be able to go into them and everything. So, like I said, preparate different different years of preparation. You learn a lot of different things <laughs> for stuff. So, um, yeah, the Be- beard master has the same type of charger as me. Rest- WrestleMania week, New York. Color. The problem is, I charge phone and I charge uh, camera as well so. oh that'll do it yeah that'll do it so all right so no nerd news this week all we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the two main rooms inside san diego comic-con what they have and what the excitement is for it and would we spend time waiting for it and you let us know too what you guys think uh if you think anything special will happen at these panels or if you would waste your time because there's not 
a lot of time in that four days to see uh, see if you'd see these panels or not. So this is going to be uh, haven't thought of a of a theme for it, but I guess it's uh, what's going on in the room where it happens. <laughs> So Ballroom 20 houses about, I think it's about 4,000 people inside of it. And, or no, 20, 2,800, something like that. Uh, Hall H houses about 6,500 in it. And when B Hall H doesn't have a great panel list going on, then stay the heck away from the showroom floor because th if that room's not full, everybody's out there on the floor. Okay. So we're going to start with Ballroom 20 on Thursday, 11.30 a.m., the very first panel. You guys can give me a guess. Let's let's have some fun with this. Give me a guess what you think the panel's about. Uh, seventh annual Music Anatomy of a Superhero Film and TV Composer Panel. Hmm. Music, Music anatomy, anatomy of a Superhero. Yes. What do you guys think it's about? And then I'll read you it's, the description. It's going to be a sesame sesame street style introduction where they're singing about the anatomy of a superhero <laughs> and big bird's gonna be dancing in the background i like it i like it and it's funny because there is no I, I, this is not what it's about but it's funny because there is a um a 50th anniversary panel for sesame street this year at a different oh, that's funny. we're not going to get to that. it because it's in a different room it's at the yeah. horton where you got to get tickets for it um gotcha. but but yeah that, i think that's oh no no horton has the Sesame Street puppets live, and then there's a 50th anniversary panel for Sesame Street as well. So, wow. Um, what do you think, uh, Nudie Rudy? What do you think? It's the... going to be the entire new Universe Avengers cast um, doing a rendition of Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Here's what it is. This is the first panel of the day in Ballroom 20 on Thursday. Music has always been an important supporting character in movies. It goes to another level in the superhero film genre, where the music sets a tone that helps define a character. An impending battle, or a triumphant moment. The annual music anatomy of a superhero returns with a Justice League slash Avenger panel of superhero composers of superhero films. Unreleased music and video clips from upcoming and recently released projects will be featured. Leading Hollywood composers will explain the process and challenge of creating music behind the superhero genre, along with collaborating with the director, producers, and the franchise. The composer panelists include, you guys love this when I have to say names, Pinar <laughs> Toprak, Captain Marvel and Krypton. Wrong. Definitely wrong. It's not Topic, it's Toprak. <laughs> um, Benjamin <laughs> Wallfish, Shazam and Hellboy, Sherry Chung, Batwoman and Supergirl, Blake Neely, Batwoman, The Flash, um, Christopher Lennertz, The Boys, Agent Carter, and moderator Mike Giacchino, Spider-Man Far huh. From Home, Doctor Strange, with inter introductions by Ray Costa, Costa Communications. Um, what do you guys think? Well, it's a solid lineup of movies they've worked on. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's it, excitement level for that panel? Would you would you want to go to it or it just is meh? <laughs> it, if yeah. it wasn't conflicting with other things i might be interested because i love music and i think music sets the tone like look at guardians of the galaxy as, yeah. as an example yeah. if if that didn't have a good soundtrack to go with it that movie might not have been as good as it was um i'm it, sorry but a but a, a panel of all the all the people on the soundtrack for guardians of the galaxy would actually be kind of be pretty cool this that would actually posers. be pretty cool yeah <laughs> but you know think about I mean, I do it all the time. I catch myself humming Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, um, Indiana Jones. You know, those things stay with you 10, 20, 30 years down the road. So it could be it could be kind of fun. Okay. Would you guys spend time in line for it? And if so, how long? Eh, about a half an hour. Okay. <laughs> so there's your excitement. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next panel at Ballroom 20, Evil Exclusive Screening and Panel. What do you guys think it's about? Evil Exclusive. Evil, ex Evil Exclusive Screening and Panel. Uh, it's got to have something to do with uh, upcoming like horror film. Um, like, a, like a villains from Disney or something. Okay. It's going to be a pop-up version of 
the Needful Things uh, store from Rick and Morty, where it's all <laughs> cursed items. It's all and, evil exclusives? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Evil exclusives. <laughs> I like just by the way of reading it, that's what comes up. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's switch over to me while I read this. Uh, evil exclusive screening and panel it is evil is a psychological mystery that examines the origins of evil along the dividing line between science and religion. The series focuses on a skeptical female psychologist who joins a priest in training and a carpenter as they investigate the church's backlog of unexplained mysteries, including supposed miracles, demonic possessions, and hauntings. Their job is to assess if there's a logical explanation or if something truly supernatural is at work. Please join series stars Katya Herbers, Herbers, there's an H, uh, <laughs> Mike Coulter, Asif Manvi, Manvi, and Michael Emerson, that's a name I know. Along with yeah. co-creators and executive producer Robert King and Michelle King from an exclusive sneak peek of the first episode followed by a panel discussion. Moderated by Lynette Rice from Entertainment Weekly, Evil will air Thursdays this fall on CBS. And nothing says Comic-Con like bringing something having to do with religion because you've got a lot of people screaming and yelling about <laughs> with signs outside. <laughs> um, Dude. Excitement level. Uh I don't know. It sounds like a bad joke. A psychologist, a priest in training, and a carpenter walk into a bar and, you know, question the locals about hauntings. It sounds weird. And why a carpenter? It is, it is, why a carpenter? Like, well, he, someone has to build the crosses to, you know, ward off vampires? I don't know. It could be the Bible reference, you know, carpenter. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got your priest, so you've got your holy water covered. I'm not quite sure where the psychologist comes in. I can see the psychologist, but the okay. carpenter. That's just the carpenter. He's carving up wooden stakes. Yeah. Like <laughs> okay. How long would I... you guys? How long would you guys spend in line for? <laughs> to... uh, five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Zero minutes. Yeah. So far, we're not getting a winning pe winning day in ballroom twenty is, on Thursday. <laughs> um, it is not going to fill the supernatural <laughs> void that they think it's going to. Uh... You are sol on that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next, if you guys, I don't even know if I should ask you guys what, what this is about. Cause I'm sure, you know, Nancy drew exclusive screening. And <laughs> yeah. Mm. The, I, I think it's about the Hardy boys. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Let's read what the panel's about. Um, Nancy drew is a brilliant teenage detective whose sense of self has come from solving mysteries in her hometown of horseshoe Bay. Maine until her mother's untimely death derails Nancy's college plans. Devastated by her mother's passing, Nancy swears off crime swears off crime solving. But when a socialite oh no, Nancy's not crime solving anymore. When a socialite is murdered, Nancy finds herself embroiled in a ghostly murder investigation. A supernatural presence begins to haunt Nancy's investigation, and she discovers that the current crime has an astonishing connection to the unsolved murder of a local girl. They're just telling us the entire episode, it sounds like. Seriously. Whether the ghost is here to help or hinder Nancy's remains to be seen. But one thing for sure, Nancy's going to have to unravel the clues from both the living and the dead to solve the crimes. Join series stars Kennedy McMahon, Leah Lewis, Madison Jazani, Alex Saxon, Taniji Kasim, along with co executive producers Naga Landau, Melinda Hasu taylor and Stephanie Savage for an exclusive sneak peek of the first episode, followed by a panel discussion. Moderated by Damian Holbrook of the TV Guide magazine, Nancy Drew will air Wednesdays this fall on The CW. Excitement levels? I loved Nancy Drew growing up. And the fact that they're turning this into a supernatural sci-fi show is weird. Um, but I think it could be fun. And again, but if they're looking to try and fill that supernatural void, that's going to be there. I don't think this is going to do it. Uh, to me, it kind of sounds like a mix of ghost whisperer meets uh, a crime solving show meets the supernatural. I was thinking it was more like a, a Scooby drew or Scooby drew. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying. Which could I would have got away with it too. If it wasn't for your damn kids. Um. Yeah, <laughs> but that could be kind of fun. I mean, okay, so not a high excitement level time you would spend in line for it. Uh, let's see. I, I, I'd probably wait like 20 minutes in line for this one because I think it's going to be a fun show. 
Yeah, that's another zero minutes for me. But <laughs> considering, like, I'd be more excited about it if I could tell you who any of these people that are in the show are. I have yeah. no idea. Like, you say these names, and I'm like, who's that? I have no idea. Well, here's the panel of the day in Ballroom 20. Uh, Super will know what this is about. I don't know if um, if uh, Nudie knows. Sci-Fi Wire's The Great Debate. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to have that... you guess because I know you know what it is. What do you think What do you think it is, uh, Nudie? Um, they're going to debate the next big replacement for Sharknado. <laughs> That's actually something that what, might happen there. That's pretty yeah. spot on type of stuff. Um, what can top that in terms of, of horrible cinema? Yeah, uh, that's exactly what it is. It's a great debate about nerd stuff. Um, it is a fantastic panel. Last year, and you can watch the video for the panel on the Malice Corp YouTube channel, it had John Barrowman on the panel. It had uh, Felicia Day. It had Orlando Jones. A lot of... Mm-hmm. Lot of nerd um, icon type of people and it was a fan t- it's a fun Adam panel Savage. it's a great panel um so let's settle this inside fearless captain aisha tyler returns with a new group of celebrity nerds for one of comic-con's most popular panels they debate some of the biggest best and funniest issues in the geek verse is darth vader a worse parent than homer simpson were you sadder to see the mcu <laughs> or the game of thrones in who is science fiction's ultimate coolest captain which they asked last year because they had they had john barrowman captain jack on the panel um, you'll you'll vote on all the winners. So remember, with great paddle comes great responsibility. They talk about that because you have panels that vo- paddles that that you raise when when they vote for who had the best answer. Plus, you can get your own questions argued by Earth's mightiest debaters, and there might be a special surprise or two. Excitement! How long? How, <laughs> how long would you spend in line? I know Super uh, would. Yeah, uh, two, two, three hours, yeah. five hours, all night. <laughs> What about you, Nudie? Sounds like fun to me. I would definitely say the two to four hour range. Yeah. It was <coughs> so funny. I have never seen anyone get mad at Captain Crunch like John Barrowman got mad at Captain <laughs> Crunch last year. Yeah. That stuff can shred the top of your mouth if you don't watch it. <laughs> it, it, it yeah. It was, it, it's, it's such tough, a fun but... panel. It is such a great yeah. panel. It, it's worth it. It's yeah. definitely worth it. Um, if you want to see it, Nancy Drew, get in line right before Nancy Drew and you should be fine without a problem, mm-hmm. I would think. Because I don't think there's going to be a lot of people going in there for that. Last power of the day, Cobra Kai, past, present, and future. Hmm. Everybody knows what Cobra Kai is, so we're just going to go right uh-huh. into what it's, what it's about. Um, here from the cast and creators of the hit YouTube original series, Cobra Kai. Sorry. Kirk's best captain ever is what Polyfuse says. <laughs> um the card here for the cast of creators of the hit youtube original series cobra kai which launched in a its second season last spring to another round of fanfare and critical acclaim from its iconic roots in the karate kid film franchise to the current youtube series fans can learn the moves it took to bring these popular characters back for a new generation and try to wrestle free the surprises in store for its upcoming third season excitement interesting Any- I would see it if there was no line. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't, I like I don't watch Cobra, Cobra Kai. I've heard it's fantastic, and both and no. both the stars will be there. Both both Dan, both Macchio and. Uh, see, I would want to see Ralph Macchio because yeah. I love Ralph Macchio. So they'll both be there, but, um, so yeah, only only panel worth worth its salt on ballroom problem 20 seems to be uh, the great debate this for Thursday. Unless you're yeah. a fan of Cobra Kai. I could see that. Unless you're a big fan of Cobra Kai. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let's go to hall H. The first panel is Terminator dark fate. We all know what that is, right? <laughs> the new Terminator film. Never yes. heard of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paramount Pre- pictures brings a Terminator dark fate panel discussion and footage presentation with talent and filmmakers. Excitement. Any. Uh, is the cast going to be there? Yeah. Yeah, Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton will be there for sure. I think it'd be kind of oh. cool. Yeah, I think it would be kind of cool. Rue to ask if Thanos can snap these shows away. <laughs> are you talking about this show <laughs> or are you talking about the shows on the panels? <laughs> the, the shows on the panel, I think. <laughs> um, would you guys spend any, any time in line for the new Terminator film? 
Yeah, I'd spend a little bit of time. I, I like the original cast, and I, I kind of want to see Arnold up, you know, well, not close, because it's Hall H, let's face it, I'll be looking, you know, like that, but it would be kind of cool. Nudie? I mean, you and me have already been hanging out, like, 10 feet from a, another celebrity governor, that XFL game, so it'd be kind of fun to hang out with the governator. I'd, I'd give it some time. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds cool. Um, next panel... See, I think people are going to go crazy for this. I'm not one because I didn't actually watch it. Batman Beyond 20th Anniversary. That's in Hall H? Yeah. Really? Wow. Batman Beyond is pretty damn popular. It, is, A lot of it was pretty huge, yeah. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, I had thought about seeing it, but I'm like, ah, it's probably going to conflict with whatever's in Hall H because I didn't catch that it was in Hall H. And, <laughs> well, now it's not going to conflict, now is it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's going to be... They, they gave it a big old freaking explanation. Um, produced by Warner Brothers Animation, Batman Beyond won two Emmy Awards, three Annie Awards, as it captured the imaginations of a new generation of Batman fans, setting new standards for superhero storytelling with innovative designs, outstanding voice acting, blah, 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 a lot of stuff. <laughs> Come celebrate the series' 20th anniversary with many members of the creative team behind the breakthrough production, including producers Bruce Timm, Glenn Murakami, um, eight-time Emmy Award-winning casting dialogue director Andrea Romano, director James Tucker, writers Bob Goodman and Stan Berkowitz, and the acting stars of the series Kevin Conroy, who did Batman and is Batman, and Will Fradel. Who I'm oh, was... I love that guy. <laughs> and I the voices go for that guy. Uh, I like that guy. And the voices of Batman and Terry McGinnis, respectively. Stay to the end for some exclusive prizes and cool announcements. Now that, <laughs> that gives excitement level, because prizes mm -hmm. is always a fantastic thing, especially when it's an anniversary panel, what the what the, what the the prizes that you could get are. Yeah. So they'll pass out little tickets and you'll get something free, which is really cool. So, um, excitement levels, would you spend time in line for it? I would spend, yeah, I'd spend I some would. time in line for that one. I love me some Batman. I've only seen a handful of episodes of the show, but yeah, it sounds like fun. I'd probably wait up two hours for that one. Bearded Master says Beyond has one of the biggest followings. That would be cool to see. Yeah, yeah, it does. So um, <laughs> next yeah. one is the Marvel's Games panel. Get an inside look at the latest and greatest from Marvel's Games. <clears throat> Attendees will see exciting new content from the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order, Marvel's Iron Man VR, and Marvel's Avengers. With many unannounced surprises and panel exclusives, moderator Greg Miller will be joined by Bill Roseman and other panelists from titles throughout the Marvel Games family. I actually am a little bit excited for this one for the whole factor that Marvel's Avengers, we didn't get enough of what we were hoping for at E3 for it. And the entire cast is there doing a signing at the Marvel booth. So I love Nolan North and Troy Baker, as you've heard in the last few weeks. I've been mm -hmm. binging the heck out of their YouTube channel, Retro Replay. So, went to um, one of their live shows. And went to their live show, yeah. So um, any excitement for this? Yeah. It sounds I cool. I love Marvel. I, li I do like Marvel. The problem is, is I just don't have any platform to play these games on. So it's kind of like, ah, uh, I'm tired of looking at cool things I can't play. Like I said, <laughs> I always want to see theories. If you have theories about any of these panels, throw them out. But they, yeah. uh, Ruru2 gave us a theory in the chat room uh, about Batman Beyond. He says that they're in Hall H. He thinks they're going to announce an animated movie like they, they did Into the Spider-Verse. Like Into the Spider-Verse. So. Into the Spider-Verse Spider did well. Really well. Yeah. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're going to try to capillate on that. Now, this is an interesting one, because the next one in Hall H is Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has never been in Hall H. It's always been in Ballroom 20. So, big upgrade for it. Um, That's interesting. A, Do you think it's because it's uh, it's ending, right? Do you think yeah. they're... Is it ending? Did they did they officially announce that? I thought I, I, heard that. That could be right. I, thought I heard that they were announcing that, but yeah. I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let's read off this this panel. Uh, it's a fun panel. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is always a fun panel. Uh, cast and producers take over Hall H for the first time ever. Be the first to hear the scoop about the show-stopping conclusion for Season 6 and what awaits in Season 7. Nothing about ending. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I was wrong. 
with your Me favorite too. stars in attendance, including Clark Gregg, Migna Wayne, Chloe Bennett, Elizabeth Henstridge, Ian De Ca- Castecker, I always mess up his name, Henry Simmons, Natalia Cordova Buckley, and Jeff Ward, along with executive producers Marissa Tun- Tunkarian, Jed Whedon, Jeff Bell, and Jeff Loeb. This is a must see panel to celebrate seven seasons with the world's greatest fans. This action packed series for the Marvel television, blah, 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 blah. Uh, excitement, thoughts, theories. It's it's a great cast. I think I, I I love Clark Gregg, so I think it'd be fun to see. I I'm behind on the show though, like way behind on the There's show. There's a big debate going. The third season. There's a big debate going on in the chat room. Beard Master says they need to give us a live action Beyond film. Rue who's like, I don't want DC live action. <laughs> <laughs> they are better at the the animated, it seems. <laughs> Um, okay, and then the last one panel woman of the day. Aquaman to be accepted. Okay, last panel of the day in Hall H for Thursday that gets me kind of excited. Um, we just talked about this a little bit beforehand. Where'd I go? And uh, Nudie Rudy was like, eh, um, his dark materials panel. Man, I just hit that the wrong man. <laughs> While I'm looking that up, what do you think? Uh, super because. I accidentally hit the wrong thing. <laughs> I love Lin Manuel Miranda. The show looked awesome. Uh, James McAvoy, are you kidding me? Uh, I I want to go see more about it, and I want to see, I want to hear their point of view on what it's going to be about. Because um, a trailer can look cool, and then it, the movie can be flat, or the TV show can be flat. You know. Um, so I, I really want to go and then maybe it'll inspire me cause it's based on a book series, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I could inspire me to go out and buy the book series, but I, I have been dying to see Lin-Manuel Miranda in person in anything. I don't care. I mean, so I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah, I, I agree. That's my big thing. Cause it, that's, that's what she was touching on is the cast that's coming for this is an HBO series. Um, the series executive producer Jane Tranter, Jack Thorne, Julie Gardner, Tom Hooper, Toby Emmerich, Deborah Forte, and Dan McCulloch. Cast panelists include Daphne Keene as Lyra, James McAvoy as Lord Asriel, Lynn Manuel Miranda as, Miranda as Lee Scoresby, and Ruth Wilson as Mrs. Cotier. The panel will be moderated by Entertainment Weekly editor in chief J.D. Heyman. So, this will be the first time Lynn Manuel Miranda is at Comic Con. And he's in the biggest room. I'm going to jump over to Friday. First one in Ballroom 20. Sci-Fi Wires. It came from the 90s. <laughs> Any thoughts about what, what? it's about? <laughs> Sci-Fi Wire came from the 90s. Wait, what? <laughs> Sci-Fi Wire. It came from the 90s. Yeah. Oh, any ideas on what it's about? Well, um, I'm going to assume it's a uh, honoration of all the 90s cartoons. That were sci-fi. Okay. Nudie? I'm going to say it is a sci-fi reinterpretation of a multiverse explanation for the Parker Lewis Can't Lose TV series. <laughs> Damn. How that was <laughs> all about time travel. And... That was so specific. <laughs> the 90s gave us everything from scrunchies to grunge to vampire fighting high schoolers. It's also birthed a generation raised on the X-Files, the secret life of Alex Mack, who became the genre-obsessed fans of today. So lace up your Doc Martens and dust off that plaid shirt. Sci-Fi Wire is bringing together a panel of iconic 90s genre stars and today's celebrity superfans to work together to test their wits and memories about some of the greatest movie, TV, and gaming of the decade. It'll be as fun as playing Myst, but way less impossible to beat. Wow. And I would love to go to that, if I could. To give us more support, Masonic Vader joins in on the cast. Hello, Masonic. How are you? I, I am well. <laughs> I, I, there's not tears underneath my eyes after leaving Toy Story 4. That, those were. Aww. I'm just sweating from getting in there. So Masonic will not be at Comic-Con this year, but he will probably be outside Comic-Con trying to hit up as much stuff as he can out there. So on Super and the 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 90s panel, reaction? I think it would be a fantastic panel, and I'm sad that I can't go. <laughs> Nudie. Sounds like fun. I'd check it out. I'd wait in line. Hour. How's that? There we go. There we go. 
And I since, uh, my were fun. since Masan's right here, we'll go to the next one. World premiere, Hulu's Veronica Mars revival. Oh, mm. why is that on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> we talk about the 90s again? Uh, I want to go back now. <laughs> I never got Veronica Mars, sorry. Oh. Uh, it's got... Let's see. I oh, dang it! I hit the button again. Come watch the world premiere <laughs> screening of the new season of Veronica Mars, followed by a conversation with Kristen Bell and Rico Colantoni. We, um, Jason Doring, Ryan Hansen, Francis Capra, Percy Daggs, third executive producer Diana Ruggiero, Wright, Rob Thomas, not from the band. Um, the cult favorite returns after ten years to hold to Hulu, with an epic eight episode mystery. So reactions. Kristen Bell is one of my favorite humans on the earth, so I'm very That's disappointed true. that I'm going to be like within a thousand yards of her, and I'm not going to get to see her. <sighs> Nudie, I've loved Kristen Bell in most anything I've seen her in. I'd, I'd love to see, uh, yeah, what's going on with the new show. I'm down. What'd you about, what about you, Masonic? Yeah, I'll probably skip that one. Um, can we talk about the '90s again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard look like one of the cutest. The problem couples. with the '90s one is oh, we don't cute. know who's going to be there. It could be, be the most has been people ever. Damn, now I have to say this because I'm running late. I might as well get my joke in. Uh, I'm I'm sorry to say this, but Nudie, you look like Mr. Miyagi on vacation. Well, thank you. <laughs> the glasses are definitely making me even smaller. And yes, <laughs> yeah, your eyes are puffy <laughs> right yeah, now, man. Oh, Ooh, I'm running some so sleep, buddy. Sleep. Yeah, it's bad. I'm switching to great. You're not gonna have any sleep next week, so yeah, yeah. No, don't remind me. Oh. <laughs> we got a good group. We got a good ma- amount of people to uh, to trade off. Switch with. you out. I will say it's kind of funny. I, I'm kind of perplexed. Veronica Mars was big as a television show. She was gone for I don't know how many years, and then she did a movie, and now she's gone for so many years, and all of a sudden she's coming back. It's. it's I think it's I, funny that this this got inside ballroom twenty, um, because when they did the movie it was in hall h and it was a boring panel for me but that's because i wasn't i didn't get into the show i i I wanted to watch it i just never got a chance to um all right the next panel steven universe yeah (laughs) so is that your reaction okay (laughs) Mm -hmm, i'm in (laughs) there's also a steven universe dance party on on at the on the (laughs) floor um on the steven universe panel you've got uh, it's for the movie. Steven Universe, the movie. He will face his biggest challenge yet. It'll be moderated by self-proclaimed ruler of the skies, Shelby... Uh, I gotta switch over. Shelby Ribera. Uh, here, Estelle. Michael Dietz. Dee Dee Magno Hall. And series creator, Rebecca Sugar. Alright. Thoughts? I'm in. I'm not familiar with it at all. Oh. Yeah. It's a great little show. It was one of the best soundtracks of any animated cool. show I've seen. Oh, Masonic. Cool. Really well done music. I, I, I'm in Super's Corner on this one, not knowing what's going on. Wow. Okay. Adorable show, people. Check it out. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Yeah. It's a I think totally I've came heard in for the bit. last 15 minutes to drop this much knowledge down. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a, li- a long game. Our, our clutch hitter. This is going to be a long cast. Don't worry. you got enough time in here. Um, Entertainment, in Week- the Entertainment Weekly Brave Warriors. Brave Warriors. Yes. The Brave Warriors wow. is a laugh-filled conversation among several of today's male heroes, including John Bradley from Game of Thrones, Cameron oh. Cuff from Krypton, Michael Emerson from Evil. They're really pushing that Evil show. Aiden I Gillen so. from Project Blue Book, Cress Williams from Black Lightning, and William Zapka from... Cobra Kai. They will discuss the thrill of playing iconic characters, their sometimes awkward encounters with fans, and the highs and lows of a career in Hollywood. Thoughts? I would not recognize a single one of them on the street, so I don't know how they're <laughs> fanning. Oh, John Bradley. John Bradley's I pretty would... recognizable. Sam from uh, yeah. from Game of Thrones. Yeah. I okay. Saw him. I would yeah. recognize him. I would recognize William Zapka, thanks to How I Met Your Mother. Um, but it doesn't sound like anything that should be at Comic Con. <laughs> why is this in ballroom 20 this sounds like something that i would watch on a special on tv like a documentary behind the stars this is not something that i would want to wait in line to go see well it is entertainment weekly 
So you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Weekly uh, I, I, is the 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 prime word there. Yeah. They said so they're we, going we, to monthly. We, they're we, becoming a monthly magazine. They're not doing. I mean, it anymore. it could no, be funny. W e a k weekly. Yeah. Oh, it, we, depending okay. on their stories, it could be funny. Don't get me wrong, because you could have some funny stories to tell, and and if you're a good story you know storyteller and, and conveyor it, it could be very entertaining but it's not something that i would see and just go "Ooh, i have to see that right now ruru 2 says a lot of filler at stcc is this the beginning of the end no that was last year that was the beginning of the end it gets better um the next panel is the boys which we've talked about <sighs> on this cast uh it's based off a comic book it is also done by That's seth gonna the, is that gonna be the amazon thing too yep yeah it'll be at the amazon activation as well so let me read this really quick the boys is good lord a really long explanation let's jump over here to who's there series stars carl urban well let's see who's on the panel the panel is going to include carl urban jack quaid anthony star aaron moriarty laz alonzo chase crawford tomar coppin karen fukuhara executive producers eric kripke seth rogan jesse t usher elizabeth shu moderated by aisha, aisha tyler it is a very graphic comic book by the same writer of Preacher for Amazon about um, people getting sick of superheroes not actually doing being superheroes. They're so so they're being vigilantes against the vigilantes. Um, thoughts? I'm disappointed. I don't get to see it. I love me some Preacher, so I would definitely check it out. Yeah, I well, Preacher, Carl Urban, uh, Aisha Tyler, Aisha Seth Tyler, Rogen, yeah. Eric Kripke. Are you kidding me? These are some of my favorite performers and writers all on the same room. And I'm, again, going to be outside. So screw all y'all. You're, you're going to be by the door at the, yeah. at the bottom sniffing or trying to hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Next panel. So this is the Amazon. I, I, I'd like to go see that one actually, okay, if, well, I, if I if I could. Up. Speak <laughs> up. Oh, sorry, I was coming in with a joke. You know, I'm trying to. Uh, anyway. No, I would love to see that just because I've seen the previews of that uh, of that from Amazon, and it looks like looks like a really good series. It almost looks like uh, um, taking Hancock uh, when he was all drunk and everything, and actually put it in a legit like, hey, this is this is what would probably really happen in in real life if people had superhero powers. You know. Yeah. Rapid fire. <laughs> Cacao. Um, I missed the part at the beginning where it said rapid fire. Yeah, I, we rapid fire. Yeah. I got bad. two more days after this. Pew. Pew, 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 pew. Six minutes left. Uh, <laughs> Carnival Row, another Amazon show. It is set in a Victorian fantasy world filled with mythological immigrant creatures whose exotic homelands were invaded by the empires of man. It explores how this growing population struggles to coexist with humans forbidden to live, love, or fly with freedom. On the panel, you will have Orlando Bloom, Cara Delvini, David Gaiasi, Tamzin Merchant, Travis Beecham, and Mark Guggenheim, and it's moderated by Tim Cash from IDMB. IMDB, sorry. Blech. What do you guys think? The, I birth of Ameri- the Birth of America mythological style. <laughs> it actually sounds kind of fun premise. And Orlando Bloom, it's got some star I, I would see it for Orlando Bloom. I, I would, I'm going to watch it just for him. You would. Yeah. Yeah. I love Orlando Bloom. I love Mr. Bloom. And then you've got TV Guide Magazine's fan favorites 2019. Fandoms Unite, the official magazine of TV, returns to celebrate its 10th annual All Star Must See event. Moderated by senior writer Damian Hallbrook, Fan Favorites brings together stars from TV's hottest shows for a lively discussion filled with behind the scenes scoop, fan encounter tales, and of course, ship talk. Super. <laughs> what? Ship talk. Oh, okay. Panis, panelists subject to change include cast members from Fear the Walking Dead, Lucifer, Legends of Tomorrow, and maybe even some surprise ones. Uh, th- I mean, I like those casts, so it could be kind of fun. Uh, Anybody else? No, oh, what the hell? I, I wouldn't wait like a super long time in line for it, but... Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Bat- world premiere of Batman Hush. So mm. they do this every yeah. once in a while. They'll they'll premiere a cartoon, so they're premiering the Batman Hush. 
uh, with Amen. filmmakers and voice cast behind the new classic for a post-screening panel that will include Jason O'Mara, Jennifer Morrison, Maury Sterling, Jeffrey Aaron, Hayden Walsh, Bruce Thomas, Justin Copeland, Ernie Altback, and Phil Barossa. Yeah. So you watch the movie and then you have like a thing and then they're going to do a encore of it after that for people that weren't there for the panel. So Yes, please. Hmm. Huh. Ruru two says Batman Hush, so I think he's he's happy about that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm down yeah. with that one. That that would be fun. I didn't know Jennifer Morrison was uh, involved in that. Okay, let's go to Hall H. Hall H. First up, writing the Avengers in game. So it's a panel with the writers of Avengers in game. Oh, I thought you said writing, like yep. horseback riding, and I'm like, no. mm, I don't think I want to go to that one. <laughs> or, or that could be a different <laughs> type of writing as well for a different talk show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's literally just a panel no. with the writers of Avengers Endgame. No, they did a good job. Yeah, all right. I but like you don't the want to be there. Better. You don't care. Uh, about I've yeah. read enough articles on their premise behind why they did what they did. I don't need to hear them talk me, about let it. Let me tell you, if it wasn't that I put the comma there versus here, it would have been <laughs> wholly something different. Well, okay, so that's that's an hour. That's an hour in Hall H on 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 uh, Friday. The next, the next yeah. panel. Here's the funny thing. Marvel, Marvel's got control of Hall H. The next panel is a conversation with the Russo brothers, the directors of Avengers Endgame. <laughs> mm. Pass. Really? Yeah. You all, are you all pass on that? I saw the movie. I enjoyed it. I don't know. I still, I feel like I've read enough articles on why they did what they did. Why do I need to hear them go talk about it? They've, they've been giving interviews. They've been doing this. And I feel like it's just going to be everything I've already heard. The only reason why I would go is just to be one of the first people here that they're announcing potentially doing another three Avenger movies or whatever it is. Cause oh, they're yeah. not going to talk about that. Actually, so we've already talked about that. Yeah. 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 That's Spider-Man the only reason why I would go there. End of this last phase, and they're launching a new phase, and here's with the new thing. Avengers, and and that'll be on that'll be on the Saturday panel. But here's the thing with the Russo yeah. brothers panel: I've heard rumors that they are going to have surprise guests. Okay, old Avengers that would be cool. there. So this might be the panel where Robert Downey Jr. pops in, or Chris Evans. See, that pops would in, be cool. Something like that. So. That's why I'm I'm kind of like I kind of want to go to this panel just because you know I've I, I've never seen them sitting down just with the the directors and kind of talking about stuff just just whatnot so yeah let's talk some Scarlett Johansson and Black Widow I'd definitely be down for that oh that'll be on yeah the, that'll be on the Saturday panel um, Dang right Vince right, right. just wants to be close to Jason Momoa yeah that's that's DC which is not coming this year <laughs> um, which is lame. All right, so right after that, you have your block that usually happens every year on Friday, and yeah. that is the Fear the Walking Dead panel and the Walking Dead panel. It, it, they were fun last year. I would go back if I could. Um, I greatly enjoyed the Walking Dead panel more than the Fear the Walking Dead just because I actually watched the show, and I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Norman Reedus, but... And that's it. That's all. That's all everybody cares about. Everybody yeah. Says, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be in front in in Hall H all day on Friday. So. Never that's... read the comic or watched the show. So yeah, for me. Yeah. All right. Right after <clears throat> that, I think we're finally gonna get you, Nudie. You have the Netflix The Witcher. Oh. Yeah. I'm think? down. It's gonna be with the Looks cast. Like a fun show. Love so. the game. Wouldn't it be awesome if Henry Cavill came out with some kind of CGI messed up mask? Oh no, no, he's not. But Henry Cavill that would be gonna phenomenal. Be he's gonna he's gonna be there. So, um, and then Netflix t- takes over again with the dark the dark quest the the dark crystal sequel. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's awesome. Oh yeah, I'd be there for that. That was a great uh, movie. Boy. Actually, uh, it's a prequel. I didn't realize that. So this is a prequel to Dark Crystal. Um. It says, in this stunning new prequel, three Gelflings discover the horrifying secret behind the Skekis powers and set out on an epic journey to ignite the fire's rebellion and save their world. But who's going to be there? It's not... Right? The cast and creators discuss all your burning questions about bringing Thra to life. So is it going to be a bunch of people walking around with puppets? (laughs) That'd be interesting. (laughs) So, and then it's the final one. It's the Game of Thrones panel. 
Yes. <laughs> really? They're having a panel? Yep. Yep. Yeah. The final panel. I want to be there just to hurl abuse. Exactly. Yeah. So I, that's what I, I want the seen. thoughts. I'm gonna I'm gonna read off I'm gonna read off who's gonna be there. And then I just want your guys' thoughts on uh, Yeah. Just wait, can I wait, can I tell you the first person that's gonna be there is like the fifth warrior back that died in the third scene of the seventh you don't even know the guy. So the off and Weiss are confirmed they're gonna be there. Yeah, no, yeah. they're gonna be there. Yeah. And they yeah. got some balls. At first, they didn't confirm it. Yes, we just put all, everybody <laughs> on the panel. So this year, on the panel, you got Benioff and Weiss, and then which are the creators? Jacob Anderson, who played Grey Worm, John Bradley, who was Sam, Samuel, Nicola Kosterwalder, who was Jamie, Liam Cunningham, who was Davos, Nathalie, Nath- Natalie Emmanuel, who's Masandi, Ian Glenn, Jora, Conalith Hill, Varys, Maisie Williams, er- Arya, of course, Isaac Hempstead Wright, Bran. And Miguel Spacknick, who who directed Battle of the Bastards and some of the episodes that people didn't like this last season. Um, <laughs> Sorry, what do you, you think about the cast that they're bringing? I mean, Arya's it's... the only... Maisie? Yeah, she's it's the only Maisie. main character. I, I love Davos. I would love to see him. Um, I'm kind of glad Varys is there. If I was Me going too. into the panel, if I could, I would get up and just apologize for what they did to his character. Yeah. Did you say that. Golden Hand was going to be there? Yes, um, Nicola Kelso yeah. Alder will be there. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. yeah that, there the you go. Right. He's, he's part of the A-list for the show. But yeah. it, it, it goes to show you, though, out of all those names, there's really two names that go on the A-list, and everyone else yeah. is is down you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah like hey we saw them a couple episodes or they they were on a lot but they weren't main characters and everything yeah. like I mean, Grey Worm. Thing. it's the last panel and you're not getting you're not getting yeah they should have all of the main characters well well <laughs> i know why they're not getting kit harrington i think he's still in in he's out you know treatment oh he's, no, he's out. out okay yeah. that's good but i mean maybe he didn't you know um so if you don't get him I'm, well, I'm really heard... surprised, though, that um, a- Emily at Clark isn't there. I'm not. No, I've just, heard you know, Emily and Kate I... both kind of bad talk the last season, though. So if everybody's not going to come. I'm kind of not surprised it's them, those two specifically, because right, I've heard so... some of them. Like, yeah. Over under. Odds that they actually let audience ask questions. <laughs> if, if they do they're gonna be screened they're they're yeah. gonna they're gonna do what supernatural did two years ago which was when the first two or three questions came out about charlie and and felicia day being written off um they halted the panel for a few minutes they went and talked to the moderators and then the moderators were now no more questions about that you you can't and anyone that came up to ask a question about that particular episode were sent back to their seat. So, uh, last one. If I get fling verbal abuse at them, I'm flinging poo. <laughs> when yeah. Benny Off and Weiss are uh, are introduced, how what, what how loud will the booze be? <laughs> <laughs> I I think it'll be a mix. I me? think you'll get booze and cheers. Okay. Mm. Cheers for what they did beforehand because there were some obviously some amazing seasons and and you're sending off the cast and then you know but there's going to be some booze for season the last season they did an amazing I, job adapting but I, I can't forgive them for those last two seasons i, I think that i think they'll cheer for them when they first come out because you know when it all when it's all said and done game of thrones was a uh, a TV altering show. It, it was. It was. It was a mash in a sense. It, it, it made an imprint, right? Yeah. However, yeah. however, as soon as those, as soon as they're all in, the booze will start because ultimately, they're you know, fans were not nobody happy else with the will last get booed. No, I, nobody else will get booed. I think just Benioff and Weiss on introduction will get. Yeah, booed. I think because they it. were the ones who who screwed the pooch. It wasn't the yeah. cast. It wasn't. It yeah. wasn't. They did Martin the best the that they the could. The, yeah. the cast did the best that they could with what they yeah. were given. Honestly. I'm just happy because the cast usually comes out the night before and hangs out with people in line and takes pictures and stuff. So there's some people in this that I that weren't there last year. So I'm hoping they they the the one that started it was Davos. The guy that plays Davos was who started yeah. it and he started getting other people to come out as well with him. So last year yeah. it was Davos, um, Bran. Masandi and Grey Worm all came out, and I took pictures and talked to them and stuff. So I'm assuming they'll they'll be out there again this year 
I'm I'm what hoping that they are cuz I'm going to try to to even though I'm not going into the panel room I'm going to try and help hold down the fort Friday night. Yeah. That's very I would like to meet the, them since the Onion Knight too. He's he's a man of the people. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, super would it, cool guy. Would it be I guarantee that when people do like uh, selfies with Bran, they're going to ask him to do the stare. All right. Well, he yeah. probably easily he'll could. have he his, glasses his glasses on. off. Yeah. <laughs> he he just has to take on. his glasses off and he'll just be, you know, squinting. Just look at me over here. I'm going to walk back and tell me if you can see me. How far How far yeah. until you can't see me anymore? Okay. Yeah. Um, last last panel that's uh, that day in Hall H is Preacher. And it will be ah. the last panel for Preacher as well. Damn. Yeah. I, I will miss that. Okay. I would have yeah. liked to have seen that one. But. It is what it is. All right, so moving on. Now you got the big day. This is the big day. This is Saturday. Sunday? Saturday. Oh, okay. This is the big day. Ballroom 20. Most definitely. Batwoman pilot screening and Q&A. CW Batwoman. What do you guys think? Uh, uh, <laughs> is, is, is Rose going to be there? I think so, yes. I will go. Let's see. Um... Oh, I, yeah. I would go. I, I'd like to, to hear the how pa- they're going to present the show. And... I'll read you off the the, the panel. Yeah, ru- uh, panelists. Uh, ru- yeah, Ruby, Ruby Rose. Rose. I mean, she'll be there for sure. Because she's... Uh, you join cast and producers a screening on, of the pilot followed by a Q&A from <laughs> executive producers Greg Berlanti, <laughs> Carolyn Drays, Jeff Johns, Sarah Scheider. The cast will include Ruby Rose, Rachel Scarston... Megan Tandy, Nicole Kane, Cameris Johnson, Elizabeth Anweiss, Doug Ray Scott, Marco Siga, and the director for the pilot, David Nutter. Don't read Paulie's comments. <laughs> He's not excited about it. Yeah. He says it's crap. Um, next panel. This day is going to kill you, Nudie Rudy, because you are going to be have your what you want to go see ripped into of where you want to go. Um, Simpsons is the next panel. Thought yeah. Thing. Okay. I'm all in. You're all in on Simpsons. Anybody else? I'd be, I'd be down for that. Okay. Then you have American Dad. Nice. Yes. I'd be down okay. for that. Yeah. Okay. No. Then Family Guy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Still, still there. Okay. Then Orville. <laughs> still yeah. there. Still Speaking there. Language. Yeah. 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 This is all nudie Rudy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you go CW straight on from from three thirty on Arrow, Supergirl, Black Lightning, The Flash, and, and Turbo Comics leaves the room. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> I went to their panels last year. Well, Black Lightning wasn't there because I don't think that I just don't think that they were there, or they did a panel earlier and I missed it and wait, was waiting in line. But they were fun. Legends of Tomorrow was so fun. I laughed for forty five minutes straight. They, they don't have they are... Legends of Tomorrow panel in there, though. They got Arrow, Supergirl, Black Lightning, and The Flash. Leg- L- LOT's not where, in there. Where the heck is Legends of Tomorrow? Probably in Indigo. Oh, Small my room. God. All right, whatever. Whatever. Screw you. Take the best dang panel. So you're and there then The Flash or... was fun, too. So you'd be so. in there after from Arrow on. Uh... Yes. And I'd be in there up until Arrow. Okay. So, yeah. so you guys are just swatting. We can cover the day. So I, I, this is I, where. I'd hang out to see Supergirl. If you guys have somebody like this, where if both people were going, which Super and doesn't have tickets for Saturday, unfortunately, but if both people were going, this is where you could do the ticket swap, bathroom ticket swap. Mm-hmm. You go to the bathroom and get a bath. You go like you're getting a bathroom pass. You get your ticket and you give your ticket to the other person in your group. They take that ticket. They go back and they sit down where you were sitting. Nice. Um, yes. So it would work Amazing. perfectly for you guys. However, mm-hmm. you're not going on Saturday. Yep. <laughs> Now, this is where I'm going to show you the pain of Comic-Con, uh, Nudie Rudy. Let me get to it. Hall H is the room that you want to be in on Saturday. Always. So you want to see Orville. I know Orville's going to gonna, gonna murder you. Mm-hmm. Hall H, the very first panels, enter the Star Trek universe panel. Ah! Oh! Which is Star Trek Discovery and Picard. Oh, nice. Picard would be awesome. Yeah. So, a yeah. must panel, I would assume. Voices. Indeed, yes. Yeah. The return to John Luke to the Comic Con would be badass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then Picard is my captain. Then 
Westworld 3. Nice. After that. Then, oh, this show. is what sucks. You have to go through the 20th anniversary animation show of shows, which is basically talking about, like, award-winning animations and showing you some of them. I hate the panel. Why um, is that in Hall H on Saturday? Every year, it's in Hall H on Saturday. I can't it's... stand the panel. That's that, that's kind of that's the equivalent of the bathroom break. Yeah, they're trying yes, to clear people exactly out of the seats. Is. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Because right after that is Entertainment Weekly's Women Who Kick Ass, which is always in freaking Hall what? H on Saturday as well. And I can't stand that panel either because it's very weird. <laughs> cool. Which very what's weird it called again? Don't be a misogynistic prick. No, it has nothing to do with that. It's just an odd panel because it's always weird pairings that they put together. And it's, yeah, it, I, it's Is women it who again? kick ass. Women who kick what? ass. Okay. Who's going to be on it? A bunch of names he's not going to be able to pronounce. I'll do that. <laughs> Actually, this one. Just um, a good there was one that happened two years ago that I absolutely loved. And it was oh, the women who kick ass panel. It was only Charlize Theron. She was the only one on it. And it was just this, a great this panel. This amazing lineup. You've got uh, the name I can't pronounce, Shora Agadushlu, um, Freema Ejiman from Doctor Who, uh, Betty Gilpin from The Hunt and Glow, Ruby Rose, and Kobe Smulders. That's a that's a fantastic lineup. I like Kobe Smulders being on it. Yeah. Yeah. The well, you know who Ruby Rose too. Yeah. I've sat through one where it was um, what's her name from uh, from. Uh, the Fast and the Furious movie and and uh, the first Resident Evil film. Rosario Dawson. No. Um, Joe Rodriguez. Yes, it's and she is character. weird. She <laughs> so, and she was on that panel, so it was it was very odd. It I mean sometimes these, these this one can be good, but it just Betty Gilpin I, from Glow, so I actually like that. Yeah. Um. um yeah, I have, I love all those. Well, I don't know Betty Gilpin very well, but it's hit or I, miss. Everyone... It's just it's just compared to what's usually in in there. It's you know it, it's a hit or miss. Yeah. panel. this is why it's hard for you. So if you go to go to Orville, you won't get to start. I mean, you could get to Star Trek and still get to Orville. Um, Sweet, sounds like a plan. That. But if then you I leave, have to make it back to H, and yeah, you if you leave H at any point on Saturday, During Saturday I'm not getting back in. Yeah. You will not get in for the Marvel Studios panel. Ah, uh, I think I may have to miss Orville. That sucks, yep. but and yeah. that's what that. Welcome to Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> that is the joy of Comic Con. Is oh my god, look at this pat. This show's coming, and this is this movie's coming, and this crap. They're all going on the days that I want to see. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, people will stay in Hall H the entire night just for Marvel. Well, I'm sure. And once Marvel's done, because Marvel will be the biggest panel of the night, mm -hmm. of the of the weekend. Once Marvel's done, it's Kevin Smith reboots Hall H. Oh, nice. I'm in for that, too. Which, oh, so what has Marvel done? What, what Jeez, time does it end? On. No, what what have they done? Seriously. That's the thing. Is they're <laughs> coming and announcing that, that Phase 4. Feige the said Phase 4, yeah. they weren't there last year. Because Feige's like, if we don't have something to wow people, yeah. we're not coming to Comic-Con. They're like, we have stuff to wow you this year. Yeah. And they're announcing the next stage of Avengers. That's that's what the, all the buzz is about. They're mm -hmm. going to be, you know, what, what's coming? How, who's going to be yeah. the new cast? Maybe some some spoilers, some leaks, you know? Just just start yeah. plugging some of the holes that they're losing from well, it uh, won't be Robert leaks. and It'll Kevin be definitely letting you know. <laughs> Only thing I've heard so far is I'm pretty sure Thor is going to return. Same Thor mm -hmm. for the new Avengers setup. But I haven't heard anybody else. So I'm, I'm very interested to hear what they say. The, the the thing about this, which they haven't announced, is do you think that they, I think it's a, mo a straight up movie panel because that's usually what it is, but do you think it ends up being a Disney streaming panel? Cause, cause... I God, hope, I hope God not. not. I'm so sick of hearing about they, that dang thing. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. Disney they, doesn't need that. Well, they no, don't need the, it. Here's the difference. They've already said, versus like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that, these shows that are coming to Disney, the ones that they're doing, the the... Falcon and Winter Soldier, all that stuff. They said they 100% tie into the movies. You need to watch the shows to get fully what's going on in the movies coming coming from here on out. It's not going to be Agents of Shield oh, little tiny no. tangents. Exactly. Exactly. Part it's bastards. Be really 100. Yeah. They're bastards. Well, they want to get you onto their service. Yeah. Everybody knows. I don't need yeah. another channel. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it's going to be the goddamn cable wars all over again. Like. 
You're going to have to have all these premium services to watch any show you want. It's just going to be all streaming now, but that's where the money is. Amazon and Netflix and everybody have really shown that owning and creating your own original content and streaming it yourself is where the money is. I mean, there's just boatloads of money there. And you expect Disney not to cash in with the properties they own? I mean... I'm not okay. saying I like it. I'm just saying that that's yeah. the way it's yeah. coming. Rue 2 says they still got D23 this year. They can announce streaming shows there, which they will as well. But the, it, there's there's some, it's, it's a very different dynamic to the panels of Comic-Con to D23. I've been to both c- conventions. D23 is rehearsed, set. This is what it is. Comic-Con is a little bit more open with it they do sometimes do questions they do you know it's not all 100 percent rehearsed on everything so not not only that though difference is d23 is all disney mm-hmm. comic-con is competition yeah this this is the this is their this is their show of the year this is their i don't want to call it award ceremony for nerds but this is what it is you make it there and you present a good product you're you're gonna have a good successful year and so that's why is- they're here for the for the uh, the Kevin Smith panel, I think will be fantastic as well because it's not a Kevin Smith Q and A, which it normally is at the end of the night for Hall and H. This is a Kevin Smith panel for the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. This yeah. will have cast members from it. This will have the first trailer for it. Chris Hemsworth's in it and stuff, which means yeah, you can bring Thor back because now you got two two panels back to back and stuff. So, um, yeah. Saturday All right, I'd sneak fantastic. in. I'd sneak in for that one. Saturday sounds fantastic. We'll be spending the, the night in line for for all these panels. I'm I'm excited for Saturday again this year because last year was not that great. Snoochie boochies from me. All right, last day. There is nothing in Ballroom Twenty. They don't do Ballroom Twenty on Sundays. Hey, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. All right, Hall H is the only place that has panels on Sunday. They're and they start with Supernatural. Yep. Is that all you got to uh, say about it? This is the last no. Supernatural panel. This is the last. <laughs> Which makes no sense to me whatsoever, because why wouldn't you do one next year to celebrate the end of the show? Because it makes always, no sense why, to this me. This is why Game of Thrones has one. Game of Thrones always did their panels after the season. That's yeah, that just makes no sense to me. Sorry. <laughs> Supernatural always does their panels before the season. Because they've the season. never had a last season, so... It's not their fault that they wrap up film. I don't, whatever. Start it just petition. makes no sense to me. Petition, you should go Sarah. out. Come back next year. I've already started a petition and I've got there a lot of support go. online. Again, um, says, what, can, can you make sure that there is uh, about four yeah. boxes of Kleenex for super? Yeah. Well, not just me, the whole panel. If they're not passing out Kleenex going in, um, they're stupid. I'm, go- I'm um, going to this one. This will be the first Supernatural one that I've gone to because it is the last one. I want to at least see one just to see. Oh, know. good. Well, we're going to have great seats because since I don't have a Friday, Saturday badge, I'm literally camping out Friday night that's, to that's for the Sunday choice. line. Camping Friday for Sunday. Like yeah, I'm right. camping out dedication. Friday for Sunday because that's screw sitting in the back of the hall. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I've, I've worked it out with Indiana She wants Indiana to be Jane. on the news. The news channels are going to come out and be like, why are you yeah. camping out so early? <laughs> I'm super Her nervous. name is Super Hoovian Freak for nothing. Uh, I, I Andy... totally bought Comic-Con tickets just so I could be there Sunday morning. That's it. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. Don't show me to uh, talk to the hotel. That was legit. Yeah. <laughs> I was Take like... your Marvel and shove it. <laughs> I'm, so, yeah. Front row. That's going to be me Sunday. So, so anyone... I... So Indiana Jane um, from from the chat room, who's not here tonight, she will be with her mom. Um, she'll she'll be coming with us, and uh, yeah, we've got it all worked out. I'm like, I'm just gonna be there. I'll miss hanging out with the people for the Saturday Hall H, you know, morning line and playing games and and eating and stuff like that. But they'll come out and they'll spell me after they get out of the Marvel panel, and then we'll you know switch off again and. And I'm because I'm like, yeah, I'm not sitting in the back this year. Screw that. We're we're Dude. sitting up front. We're gonna be in like the first two rows because I don't no, think they're, anyone they're else is gonna be camping close. out Friday night for it. I hate being that close. I think oh. I heard you right because you, I know you guys aren't gonna be able to take showers. Did you just smell me right or something like that? I, no, we I, take I, showers. We have hotel rooms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the yeah. hotel room. Okay, guys. Just we just sure. we only use the hotel rooms for like maybe an four hours of the entire convention <laughs> so. we're all coming to your house for a shit in a shower you know what it's it's 45 minute drive you're more than welcome <laughs> all right um, after after supernatural you have the the riverdale panel 
which I might stay for. I didn't last year um, because I hadn't caught up with the season yet, but I think I will stay this year because I want to see what they do to honor Luke Perry. That'd be interesting. I didn't think about yeah. that. Yeah. Sounds like, this sounds like. Hey. What? What's that? This sounds like. It sounds like Super's Day. Yeah. Well, no, because yeah, after that, Sunday. after that, it's Mayans M- MC motorcycle. Yeah, I'm like I'm that. out. Super out. <laughs> the next chapter in Kurt Sutter's award-winning Sons of Anarchy saga. It's a, it's a spinoff of Sons of Anarchy. Oh, that's what that Mayan stain was. Yeah. All right, yeah, still not gonna watch it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then the bastards. Damn you, Comic Con! You snuck it in on Sunday. They put Trailer Park in there. Which, if you guys, you guys yeah. don't know this, we have a chat room for just these nerds, for the people that are part of Malice Corp. And I was complaining about Trailer Park for a good hour, explaining how there's no like when there's no space to fill in Hall H, they throw up trailers. They call it Trailer Park, and it's not even like trailers that haven't for new movies or anything it's like old trailers that have already been put out like two weeks prior or three weeks prior so nobody leaks them so literally yeah. <laughs> stuff like that it's like a 30 minutes of just watching old trailers um so it's annoying and they snuck it in they snuck it Spider-Man in Spider-Man starring <laughs> Tobey Maguire yeah. that's hilarious <laughs> so that's your that's your ballroom 20 in Hall H um for the entire show so what do you guys think okay. how often will you be checking out panels of these two I mean there's other panels as well. I get a lie the way you made it sound. It, it sounded like a fireworks show that let off the grand finale halfway into the show and ends up with duds on. Uh, oh, that's, that's Saturday's always the day. Saturday's definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Sun, Sunday, other than the first two panels, which are catered towards Super and actually, quite frankly, a lot of fans. Yeah, the a lot rest of fans. that day, a lot. A, the rest of that day, just. Yeah. What do you, th- what do you think, yeah. Nudie? Meh. Doesn't sound like fun to me. Well, no, Hate I mean just, just overall the for the for the the week yeah. the, uh, ballroom twenty. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean it. Like you said, Saturday is the big wower of a day. Marvel's the one panel I don't want to miss. Love to be there for a Jay and Silent Bob. So it does suck they couldn't counter program some of the other stuff I like on other days. But you know, eh, what well, can you do? Like, Saturday's the like, big day. Here's here's the painful one for my wife. Uh, Horton Grand Plaza, um, which you have to get tickets for to do it. Um, they have a ten year anniversary of Parks and Rec. Ah, oh, that's yeah. a great show. Yeah, and so, but but she's there with her little sister that she's gonna do whatever her little sister wants to do, and I think that's the same day as the Steven Universe panel or something like that, and she wants to go. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Ugh. So my wife's gonna miss out on that. So, um, Aww. yeah, let us know what panels you guys are gonna be checking out. Super, what do you think about the week? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be doing a lot of offsite stuff Friday and Saturday. So that will be what I um, am looking forward to. And the only one I know of right now is Brooklyn nine, nine. And so I'm going to definitely go to whatever that is. For the um, offsite? The offsite. Yeah. Did you already register? You can go already go register for it. Okay. Then I'm going to go register for it. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm already ahead of stuff. I'm already starting to do things. Um, Ruru2 says no Star Wars. Yes, there is no Star Wars. No Star Wars at Comic-Con. Maybe yes, next year. I agree at D23. Maybe at D23. Exactly. D23. And we have our tickets for Star Wars Celebration next year already. And we'll talk yes, about Good readings to bad rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. That's our that's our cast for this week. That's the panel. That's the panel cast. That's the, the hype. Come back next Friday. It is the third annual live from Hall H where I will be standing in a line trying to yell over other people and ask can you see me do you understand me and masonic vader will be sitting there going no they don't see you no they don't understand you (laughs) i'm gonna do my best to fill in translation speech and uh and sign language and uh straight up madness we are the only podcast that records live from hall h while getting ready to go to the saturday portion of comic-con so definitely come back 8 p.m pacific standard time here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Malice Corp, and be a part of the show. With that, let's talk about where you can follow everybody outside of this cast and where you can see what they're doing for the Comic Con week. Masonic, since you snuck in late, where can people follow you? Masonic Vader on uh, Twitter, Masonic Vader 71 on PlayStation, and uh, pretty much go up to Vista, which is northern San Diego. You'll find me all week long there, and I'm always in San Diego. Yeah. Are you coming down to downtown at all to try and check out some stuff there? Uh, we'll see. I mean, my, my kid's really bummed we didn't get the tickets, and 
but I kind of explained them. Down. There's so, so much stuff to do. Lots of off sites. There's the museum I, here. There's all kinds of stuff you don't I mean, for. I'm, I That's only have tickets for a few days, and I'm I'm going <laughs> to, you know, enjoy myself. So Wax on. <laughs> Sign up. Do the. <laughs> I'll check it out. You guys go have to help me out because I, I totally ca- I totally checked out of it, and I was thinking I have to host Friday night. <laughs> Well, you can still host Friday night and come down for stuff during the day. So, yeah. Uh, Nudie, where can people follow you? Follow me at Nudie Rudy, N U D I E R U D I E, at uh, Instagram, on uh, uh, PlayStation Network. Uh, yeah. And uh, Twitter. There you go. That's the other one. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be on the third season here's, of Cobra Kai. Here's the funny yeah. thing is that I think one of your handles is R U D I E, and one of them is R U D Y. It's quite you possible. You don't yeah. have them both the same, yeah. so. Yeah, screw that. That's way too easy. Yeah. But uh, find me, follow me, and look for all the fun Comic-Con content. Oh, there's going to be tons of Instagram yeah, photos from him. I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteeing that, so. Oh, yeah. Um, so definitely look up Nudie Rudy. Him running, around, running away naked from the police. <laughs> that could be Wouldn't be the first time. Seriously. Uh, that, that would not be the first time. <laughs> super. Where can people follow you? Uh, follow me on Twitter at Super Whovian Nut or on Instagram at Super Whovian Freak. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of Comic Con stuff dropping in the next two weeks, so I'm excited. And if you want to follow this cast, it's written above. You can see that at All Nerd Podcast on Twitter, or you can check us out on Facebook. Come party with us, come hang out with us, come talk whatever you want to talk about that's somewhat appropriate, not not religious or political, on <laughs> facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash all things nerd podcast, or just go to Facebook and look up all things nerd podcast. Um, you can listen to us anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If, while you're there and you find us, make sure that you're subscribing, you're dropping a comment, and you're giving us a review. And if you're at YouTube, same situation, please hit subscribe. Please drop a comment. Please give us what your thoughts are on everything. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at Mest underscore Malice Corp and on Instagram at Mest5150, where there will be more video coming on my Geek Guidepost channel, I'm assuming, if I can get stuff edited. Thank you guys for joining us for this hour and a half long podcast. We will be back next Friday live in Hall H. You keep nerding on. And enjoy this week that's coming up.